Okay. So, um, as all of you know, yesterday we were doing the September 2020 paper. And uh, we'd already done four questions. So, today we'll be doing the rest of the paper. But before that, I want to ask you all, is there any thing that you all want to ask or any doubts or any questions that you might have regarding typing for CS1? Nothing as of now. Okay, so then let's move on to question number five. So question number five is uh, consider a regression model in which response variable yi is linked to explanatory variable xi by the following equation. Assuming that the error terms ei are independent and normally distributed with expectation zero variance sigma square. In a sample size of uh, in a sample of size n equal to 10, the following statistics have been observed. They have given you the values of sigma x, sigma y, sigma x square, sigma y square and sigma xy. Okay, so all of this is already given. The first part is calculate the values for SXX, SYY, and SXY. So over here, as you all can see, it's just for three marks. So uh, it's not important or it's not very mandatory that you have to write the formula for all the three of them. You all can directly uh, show the values and then write the answer the, by showing the values. I mean, by substituting the values so since it's for three marks minimum one step you have to show you cannot directly write the answer because as you can see they've asked you to calculate it and not state it okay so that's the very big difference between calculating and stating so make sure you all remember this during the exam so what you all can do is the uh, xx the x and y's in the subscript you all can not write it in the subscript also instead you all can write it like this if you wish to you can write like this and of course in case any of you want to write it in the subscript then you can use control equal to shortcut and uh, write it in the subscript as well okay all three of them are equally acceptable you can write it in the equation editor also all these ways are acceptable for writing SXX, SYY, and SXY. After that, what you have to do is one thing is you can either write the formula, then show this, then show the substitution of values, and then give the final answer, or you can omit the formula and directly show the substitution of values. However, I would suggest that it is always important if you have the adequate speed, you should write the formula for at least one of them any one of them you write the formula so that they know what lines you're working on after that you can easily show the substitution so for example in the examiner's report they have uh, straight away shown the substitution they haven't given the formula i would suggest that for uh, let's say first we're calculating sxx so for sxx you can write the formula and maybe for syy and sxy you can omit it Okay, and then you must show the working because one step is important for calculations. And then finally, write the answer in this form. Okay. For part two, part two is write down using your answers to part one, the value of Pearson's correlation coefficient between X and Y. So now for Pearson's correlation coefficient, uh, you all can use R, obviously. Uh, and in case had it been the row, if you all wanted to use row, then you can get row from the insert tab. Over here, we can find row. Let's see, where is it? Here. It's the small row, not the capital row. Okay. So the small row you can insert from the uh, insert tab. And in case you want to use the equation editor, then it is backward slash RHO. And you obviously always you can straight away just write RHO for row. So all three you can be done. And over here we just an R. And obviously again, there is a calculate, uh, this is a write down sum. So for write down, you may not show the calculations. It's fine if you don't. 
but obviously it's always better to show one step so as you can see over here also they've shown one step so you show just one step and then you straight away put the value no other working has to be shown at all part three calculate estimates of the parameters a and b in the regression model so uh, this one is for two marks so over here again same thing they have done now over here the a hat and the b hat b hat and the b hat. a hat and b hat right so a hat you can write like this make sure that if your a is becoming capital again press control z as soon as you see it becoming capital so that it goes back to small a because otherwise it becomes misleading if you leave your answer script with a capital A instead. Okay, so A hat, B hat. Another way that they have suggested is this, that I strongly recommend not to use this because it looks very off. It's better that you simply write A hat, B hat. And for the equation editor, how do you add the hat? You type in the A first, then you take a backward slash and write hat. So after that, the hat will come after the A. So you press another space bar and it comes on top of the A. Okay, so A hat and similarly B hat also we can type double time space bar so that it goes above the B. Okay. So that is for number five. Again, they've just shown one step working. Because it's for one mark, so you can just show one step and straight away write the answer. Nothing else is required. So as you can see, this entire six mark answer, you could easily solve it on pen and paper and just fill in the values on the MS Word document because there was actually no calculation as such that had to be shown on your MS Word. So this is how they will keep the paper usually so that there is not that much amount of typing involved in your answer script. Okay. Now again, state the three components of a GLM. Even though this question paper is from an offline term, maybe just maximum of a two questions, I would say one to two questions is the most you can expect, which will be directly theoretical right from the book. So again, it is important. Now such questions, if they give, it is very, very, very important that you give proper referencing. All right. Because uh, since we tend to ignore theory questions so much in the online exams, in the online exams, we uh, tend to ignore the theory questions so much that we often forget in case we are faced with a theory question, we get happy that while they've given us theory, we can straight away take the answer from the mat and write it. But in that way, we forget to give a very important referencing, which IFOA has started taking very very seriously so it is important that you all take proper referencing for any kind of theory question and very importantly again even if you are taking it right from the mat you're giving referencing all that is fine but still make sure that you alter some words don't literally copy paste it like every comma every full stop don't make it same ditto read it and Try to frame it in your own words so that at least the examiner feels that yes, you are taking some efforts or you or you did have some knowledge of your own and you didn't just copy paste it. So as uh, you obviously notice that we are not saying where is the answer taken from. We are telling them where is the reference taken from. So you are referring to the book. You are not directly copying and pasting from the book. Okay. So let's say suppose the answer a distribution of the, uh, these three lines you just have to write and after that make sure you're giving referencing you write reference now one more thing if you have to insert bullet points okay in such answers in case you have to insert bullet points to uh, answer the question how do we insert the bullet points once i will just show it to you you go to home in the home tab, you can see in the paragraph portion, there are all kinds of bullets available. What I would suggest is to go for the simple bullet. And another way of giving the bullet is 
just simply pressing the greater than sign. The greater than sign, if you type and then you press a space, first of all, the greater than sign itself can act as a bullet. So you can use that. In this one, I think it's not taking. But in some of your devices, when you press the grid, when you use the greater than sign in the form of a bullet, it will automatically change itself to this arrow bullet. Okay. Hmm. Otherwise, it's okay even if you just use the greater than sign as a bullet, or you can just press the bullet button. And you'll get the bullets as it is. All right. So a linear predictor. So again, for the bullets also, if you want to change the indentation in case your bullets are coming a little towards the right, then you can make use of the ruler and just drag it and make it aligned with the rest of the lines. Okay. And when you press enter, after every bullet you put, when you press enter, then another bullet will come. But it might so, might so happen, for example, over here, I don't need this bullet. Instead, I want to write something without the bullet point so what do i do i press and enter again as soon as i press enter again the bullet point disappears and word gets the message that i do not need the bullet point anymore i just have to write something in the normal alignment okay so then the referencing referencing uh you start with the cmp the year of the compiler which you are referring to at the bottom you will see the year is written in every uh, mac you write the year. Acted is the uh, organization which publishes our books. Um, then you write the subject name, which subject book you are referring to. And then you write the chapter number. Let's say chapter 11. Uh, and then page number. Page number, up to page number, it is mandatory. After that, uh, you might want to add the paragraph number, but paragraph number is not something as important. But definitely up to page number, it is very, very, very important. In fact, it is a must. It is a must that you give up to this much. Okay. Then moving on to number two, part two. In a mortality model, the number of deaths dx at age x is modeled with a GLM. Dx is assumed to have a Poisson distribution with expectation mx equal to exponential of a plus bx for each age x such that dx follows Poisson exponential a plus bx. Now state the specific form of each of the three components of the GLM for the above mortality model. Again, very easy. You just have to write this. Uh, you can use bullet points or you can simply use different lines. On different lines, you can write all the three points. After that, yes. yeah, that's all. part three, as you can see, part three is something that involved a lot of algebra. So they've simply converted it into an MCQ. Identify which one of the following expressions gives the correct likelihood function as a function of the unknown parameters A and B based on the observed number of deaths for all ages 20 to 80 given by d20 dot 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 d80 assuming that the number of deaths at different ages are independent so over here instead of so showing so much algebra you just have to straight away write the answer exactly in the same way that they have written it in the examiner's report you do not have to show any working straight away just write whatever option you think is correct okay after that again an mcq so again over here there is absolutely no requirement of any typing you just write the option number and you write ans 
Okay. Moving on to question number seven. The PDF of a normal distribution is given as follows with my uh, x, 10, x between minus infinity and infinity and between minus infinity and infinity s greater than zero. Okay. Identify which one of the following is the correct expression for the exponential family. Again, so much of typing would be would have to be done if you would have uh, got this question as a normal, straightforward, subjective question. But they have very easily converted it into an MCQ where you can do the solving, whatever solving you want to do, you can do it on paper. Make sure during the exam, you always, always, always have loose sheets around you, loose sheets and the pen so that you can do any working at any point of time. So you can solve this on paper and just select the correct option. Okay, no working at all. Part two, same here. Again, you do not have to show so much typing. Simply just choose the option. An analyst found that the mean and standard deviation of this distribution are expectation x equal to m and standard deviation of x equal to s, s square. In your answer, you may denote theta by the word, um, by the spelling, and phi by phi. So, as I had said, Greek letters, there are always multiple ways you can write the name using normal using the normal keyboard you can use the insert tab and insert from here let's say new okay let's insert theta only mm, yeah theta you can insert theta you can immediately enter the equation editor and get the theta or uh, yes primarily these three are the main ways so for some letters, you might use just the first letter. For example, for alpha, you can just write A. For beta, just write B. But I would suggest don't go for this because end of the day, you only might get confused later on that what have you done. So it's always better than just type alpha. It will hardly take one millisecond extra. So just go for it. Type alpha or uh, just use the equation editor. If you have adequate practice, every time your mind will know that a Greek letter is coming up, it will automatically, just while typing, it will automatically press Alt equal to quickly. Just you would have typed uh, alpha normally. Instead, you would just add a backward slash and type, type alpha along with that. So that will get you the um, Greek symbol also. Okay. So these are just some ways which even I have used in my exams. I've always preferred having the actual Greek symbol than typing out the entire symbol. So I think if you all practice enough, you all can also easily do it. It is very doable. I've done it in all my exams that I've given online. So that is that. Apart from that, the next part is justify using the properties of the exponential family, whether or not the analyst is right about the mean and standard deviation of the distribution. So over here, it's a completely theory question. Just the symbols were required in the middle. So I've shown you how to use the symbols in the question. Next part is contrast a numerical variable and a factor covariate in the context of a GLM. A hundred percent theory question. There is no a practical part involved in this it's completely theoretical so this question again can be dealt with only moving on to question number eight question number eight is as you can see ebct so for ebct also you can make use of excel if you want <coughs> you can use excel if you want for the calculations but make sure if you are using excel whatever formula you're typing in your Excel cells. Don't write the formula because you don't have to show them that you have used Excel, but you have to explain it to them. You can maybe write the formula. For example, if you're using it to, let's say, calculate uh, expectation of M theta, if you're using Excel, then you just explain how you got the value, whatever column you have added, what does that column denote? You can just say that 
maybe for one cell the, here there are four rows so here you would have calculated four uh, values you would have calculated four values for the next column so you can just say what the uh, for any one cell you can show exactly using the numericals how the value was obtained okay and then that right, similarly the other values were obtained it's not necessary that you have to show for each and every cell which is why excel is doable over here same for the other two parts also we'll just have a look at the solution ones so here again <clears throat> formula as i said the formula is very important that in such questions you must write the formula whatever formula you're using and uh, i would in fact also suggest that if you all want you all can give the reference for the table book in ebct questions in your table book as you all must be knowing the formula for ebct is given so if you all want you can give a referencing every time you write the formula maybe for one two places you can write reference uh, or from page this of the tables formula and tables okay so that is also something you all can do the credibility factor again as i said you can do the calculation and you can for the formula you can give a reference to the table book state any two key assumptions underlying ebct model one and explain what these <coughs> assumptions mean for the data x i j above again a theoretical question so there is uh, no requirement however in such questions make sure your question numbering is very 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 properly done for part three there are two parts so make sure it is clearly visible make sure it is clearly visible when you are doing part a and when you are doing part b <coughs> once you move to the third level of numbering the first level of numbering is the question number that just has to be written once on top of the page when you're starting the answer the second level of numbering is these roman numerals and the third level of numbering is again the abc in the question so what i always suggest is that up to the roman numerals you can write it once okay but once you have the abc you should write the roman numeral as well as the abc in numbering i'll just show you how for example part 3a let's say i write the answer this is my part 3a answer then i move on to part 3b instead of just writing b over here i would suggest write part 3b so that it's clear and the examiner does not miss out on any portion okay or they don't have to search which b exactly are you talking about okay so it's always better that you give both references the second numbering also as well as third numbering also so these are very theory questions question number nine firstly up to her is there any doubt for any of you any of you are um doubtful about anything that i have discussed up till now nothing everything is clear okay great so um let's move on to question number 9 for an empirical investigation into the amount of rent paid by tenants in a town data on income x and rent y have been collected a total of 300 tenants of one bedroom flat have been recorded assume that x and y are both normally distributed with expectations mu x and mu y variances sigma square x sigma square y sx and xy are the sample standard deviation for random samples of x and y respectively the random variable zx is defined as this state the distribution of zx and all of its parameters so again here all we have to do is just give the name of the distribution and the parameter of course it's a chi square distribution so you just have to type the degrees of freedom 
make sure that you are explaining how you got the 299 by doing 300 minus 1. Okay, instead of n, maybe you can just write 300 minus 1 equal to 299. But the working has to be shown. You cannot directly write chi square 299 because the entire question is for two marks. So make sure at least two proper lines you are writing in the question. All right. Part two, write down. Okay, now chi square. One thing in the equation editor, there is no shortcut for getting the chi square fully. What you have to do is first you get the chi and then you give the square yourself. Okay, And then for the degrees of freedom, you can um, use the underscore and get degrees of freedom as well. Okay, So this is one very important thing in chi square. The same goes if you are using it from the insert tab. If you are using chi from the insert tab, um, that is chi here. If you use chi from here, you have to show it like this, or uh, you can. And if you are doing it like this, then you cannot write this. This is not acceptable. If you're doing this, then you have to mention it with BOF or degrees of freedom 299. Otherwise, the other option is chi squared with degrees of freedom 299. In case you do not want to insert the chi symbol. Okay. Part 2, write down the expectation and variance of Zx. So the expectation and variance of Zx again is easy to calculate. You will just have to. just have to write the expectation and the variance because it's completely related to the degrees of freedom. What you all can do is you all can just mention that if, uh, let's say you can just write the formula. From the table books, you can just see the expectation and variance formula for chi-square distribution and write the formula maybe. Because it's for one marks, it's always better that you take it as half and half, okay? So half mark for the value and half mark for the uh, formula or the substitution, let's say. Clear? Part 3. Explain why the distribution of Zx is approximately normal. It's a completely theory question. Absolutely no type, uh, no mathematical typing involved. Part 4. Calculate the values of an approximate 2.5% quantile and 97.5% quantile of the distribution of Zx using your answers to part 2 and part 3. So here, there is some typing involved, some uh, complicated number typing involved, because you have to show this Q97.5. So what you can do is you can write it like this also. But I would always suggest giving the underscore in these cases or simply pressing control equal to and writing the 97.5. All right. Make sure you're using enough brackets. Just type this one. Ninety-seven point five minus two ninety-nine. Bracket will close. By square root of 589 or 598. After this, as you can see in the next line, the next calculation for the 297 uh, for the other quantile, only this portion is changing, just the subscript portion is changing. So you can easily copy it and paste it. And over here, just change this quickly to 2.5. Right now, it may seem that how will I know what to copy, what to not copy. But with practice, you will automatically, your hands will get used to it. And it will start copying every time it sees an opportunity to just edit it easily. Okay. Yes. So make sure you show the calculations properly. Now. 
next part in the collective sample the main income is 1838 dollars and with the realized sample standard deviation of 211 dollars the mean rent is 608 dollars with a realized sample standard deviation of 275 dollars and they have also given you sigma xy okay so 95% confidence interval for both both the parts will be very similar you just have to show the calculation. Now the confidence interval calculation you can show inside the brackets or you can show it as upper limit and lower limit. But make sure that your final answer, your final answer should always be inside the brackets. Okay, your final answer must always be inside the brackets, made it into bold. And you must mention ANS. Okay. This working can be shown inside or outside the brackets. That is up to you. But definitely the answer within the bracket. So the same for both the parts. Next part. Oh, even part seven is a confidence interval. So it's fine. Part eight is identify which one of the following option gives the correct form of the equation. For the simple linear regression model of rent on income, including any assumptions required for statistical inference. So you just have to mention the option number again. And even the assumptions or whatever conditions are required, they have mentioned those also in the MCQ option. So nothing at all has to be written, just the option number. Okay. Calculate estimates of the slope and intercept. Again, for the estimate of the slope and intercept, First of all, it is important that you write the formula. You write the formula just like over here this is written. It is very important that you write this. Now it might so happen that how will we get this uh, sigma sign? I would suggest that for formulas, you should take the effort of actually getting the sigma sign. Uh, whether you get it using the equation editor, capital S I G M A. Or you can use it from the insert tab if you have it ready and you're recently used. Okay. So from either way, I would suggest for formulas at least, you should use the sigma sign in case you do not want to. In case you do not want to use it, you can write it as sigma, or not sigma, write it as sum of. XY minus, or well, if you want X, I, Y, I also you can write. If you want to incorporate the I also. And now you'll notice that just for writing the formula, when you have to take so much effort, it's always better that you simply uh, write all formulas in the equation editor instead of trying to type it using keyboard notations. Okay, minus. <clears throat> Sum of xi to sum of yi and then one more bracket close divided by n. And here again for the entire subtraction, you have to show one more bracket. Okay. Next level of substitution where you substitute all the values. Again, it is important that the order of substitution is corresponding to the order of your formula. So in my, uh, if you're writing 1838 into 300 into 608, then it should completely correspond with whatever formula you have written, okay? That is how you're supposed to substitute the values and show the substitution. For B hat, you must write the formula first of SXY by SXX, and then again, substitute the values and write the final answer, okay? So these steps are very important. Even if you're giving your exam online, in fact, I would say even more important if you're giving your exam online because they will know that you have done it yourself instead of just copying from someone else. Okay, You have explained it. So even if you make an error, let's say in division, but you have written this, so you will be awarded marks. But if you wouldn't have written this and straight away written a wrong value for this, then maybe they could have 
thought that maybe there is some unfair mean being used. Okay. Uh, last sum, number 10. It is thought that house prices in certain areas are correlated with the quality of schools in the same areas. A study has been carried out in 10 regions where average house prices and school quality indices range from 1 to 10 have been recorded. So this is the table. I had shown you yesterday how to insert the table. Now one very important thing over here, the confidence interval. I forgot to mention over here that when you write the confidence interval, you can see this is an interval for income. This one is for rent. So these values, these are um, uh, quantities measured in the monetary units, which over here is dollars. So you must mention dollars inside the confidence interval. I think they did not mention it in the examiner's report, but this is strongly something which all of you should follow because uh, number one, it obviously shows proficiency. And number two, it uh, it is a correct thing. Of, it is the correct way of doing and some examiners may penalize you for not in uh, incorporating the dollar sign or the pound sign. Okay. Hmm. State what is meant by response and explanatory variables. Completely theoretical. Comment on the relationship. As I had said, making a graph is hardly expected in online exams probably you will not be asked to make any graph however interpretation of graphs is equally important because now that they will not give you to make it they will give you more and more interpretation of graphs so over here again comment on the relationship between school quality index and house price using the plot so this is how you will be asked to interpret the graph or maybe uh, comment on the graph etc so you should, I would suggest commenting and interpreting. You should uh, preferably write it in bullet points so that all your points are clear and demarcated. However, if you are unsure of a something, then only move on to write it in paragraph form so that maybe you can give some overlapping points only then. But it is always a better way of presentation that these sort of comments should be given in bullet points or separate lines. If not, you don't have to give actual bullet points, but you should write it in separate lines so that your different points are visible and the examiner can easily give you marks. Another important thing is highlighting of the keywords. So for example, let's see this answer over here. In the examiner's report, they have written this two-line uh, two answer. So the keywords in this, Insert a page. So the keyword is, I'll just type in, there is an increasing and relatively linear relationship. However, the trend and linearity are not very. So now, once you have written this, this is just a two mark answer. But let's say you had to write a four, five line comment. What you must always do is highlight the keywords. How do you highlight? Once you're done writing the answer, then you just highlight the keywords by making them bold. So just highlight the keywords every time you're writing any sort of theoretical answer. Part three, Pearson's correlation coefficient between the data is given as R equal to 0 0.7. A statistical test is performed using Fisher's transformation to determine whether Pearson's population correlation coefficient 
is significantly different from zero. So this is the hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. Identify which one of the following gives the correct value of test statistic. Again, an MCQ, no typing involved. So as you all can see, CS1 uh, is not heavy on notations, but it is very heavy on algebra. So that is why they have converted it more into MCQs so that you can do the al major algebra solving portions on paper and just choose the correct option over here. So here, of course, the plus point is that you're getting to do on paper and just getting two marks for writing the answer, the final, just the answer number. But the drawback is that uh, there is no step marking involved. So had it been, had you, uh, well, if you were showing your entire working on your script, then maybe for it would have been for, let's say, three marks. But if you went wrong midway, you would have at least fetched one to one and a half marks, correct? So that, of course, everything has both sides to it. So anyway, part B is write down the conclusion of the test at 5% level of significance, including relevant critical values from actual formula and tables. So here, every time you take out a critical value from the table book, please, please, please make sure that you are writing the page number from which you took out the value. No, for MCQ questions, no steps at all have to be shown. As I had shown you, I'll just show it once again. I will just show it once again. You just have to write this bold portion, okay? The bold portion that they have given is all that you need to write. You do not even have to write what the option consists of, not required. This working is just shown for explanation purpose because this is, of course, a sample solution. However, in your scripts, you just have to write this much. All right. Is that clear? OK. So number B, of course, very important to give the referencing. And uh, make sure you are, whether you are accepting the hypothesis or rejecting the hypothesis, highlight it so that it's amply clear what your final verdict is, okay? So make sure you do that. The linear regression line of house prices on school index is given as y hat equal to 133.8 plus 7.386x. A t-test is performed to determine a slope parameter significantly different from zero. Again, an MCQ, so no typing involved. Calculate the value of the test statistic. So over here, they have asked you to calculate the value of the test statistic. So, of course, you have to show a minimum of minimum of three steps. Minimum. So, of course, it's two marks. So, and there are quite some steps involved in the working anyway. Now, these things, you can see there are a lot of different uh, symbols used over here. So what you can do is, instead of, I would say, sigma and beta, you can always write sigma and beta, or you can easily insert it from the symbols over here. You can use the equation editor. So just wait a second. So type it, and then you can go on copy pasting it. Okay. But if you all are more comfortable, then this too can be done. Sigma hat where is equal to 1 by 8. So as you can see, there are obviously so many brackets involved if you try typing it like this. But again, it is important that you keep this also in practice. Standard error for beta, either you you do it like this, or you write it as beta hat is equal to. Now the sigma hat square. Don't type out whatever you uh, whatever way you're using, whether you're using the equation editor, whether you're using the insert tab, or whether you're just typing it out. Whatever it is, just copy paste it. Okay, copy paste it by SXX. As I said, no subscript is required. 
Now this is under the square root. So instead of writing to the power half, it is always suggested that you should just write square root. And then you substitute the form of values. Similarly, for beta hat again, you just write the values and finally give the test statistic. Next part is write down the distribution of the test statistic. Very normal. Write down the conclusion of the test. Same as above. Here you will have marks for the correct critical value and the proper referencing for matching it with the test statistic and for giving a proper conclusion and mentioning the level of significance. Okay. Again, there is a comment. So commenting is something that these questions, usually they do come with a comment. So these two tests are actually similar. Therefore, it is not surprising <coughs> that they yield to the same conclusion that there is a linear relationship between house prices and school indices. Okay. Again, since it's a comment question, you can highlight the keywords. Apart from that, it's completely fine. So with that, we finish September 2020 paper. I want you all to try out at home. Uh, April 20, uh, April 2020, we didn't have exam. Uh, September 2019 paper. I want you all to try out at home. It was an offline paper, which is why it will involve a lot of algebra. It will have some theory questions also maybe. So I want you all to practice it. Don't consider the timing as much in that paper because obviously it won't match the relevant timing as of now. But make sure you are getting the hang of it. The amount of algebra that those papers will make you write is something that will give you practice. So don't time yourselves while doing the paper. But I definitely want you all to try it out on MS Word. If you don't know any topics, if you all haven't covered any topics as of now, skip those questions. But rest of them, definitely try it out. Okay. So anything else? Anything you want to ask? Or any doubts you want to clear before the next class? Ma'am, so in CS1, mostly we'll be getting MCQs as well? Um, No. I wouldn't say that you will be getting mostly MCQs. Definitely compared to the other three papers, usually we see that CS1 does have more MCQs, but sometimes they give zero MCQs. So don't sit in the exam with the uh, expectation that you will be getting MCQs. You can get anything, but definitely they will make sure that your typing and the uh, whole concept of online examinations is taken care of while making the paper so if not mcq then as i had said yesterday they might uh, substitute the uh, equation with variables and ask you to just simply write the value of the variable they can do something like that or they can increase the marks to incorporate the typing efforts okay ma'am and one more thing for two mm -hmm. marks question we're only supposed to write the formula like one line and then write the answer is it formula substitution and then the answer for okay. two marks, definitely formula substitution and then the answer. For one mark, only one step is required. One mark, I would suggest that you can <clears throat> skip either the formula or the substitution. Either of the two can be omitted. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Anything else? Is everything clear up to now? In case while practicing any of you face any doubts, uh, you all can contact any of the faculty members. If you have my number, then perfect. Otherwise, you can contact the other faculty members. They'll just give you my number and you all can ask me. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye.